What is going on guys? Politics Gaming here and today we're going to be previewing a brand new game that is being funded as of right now. I will put the link to everything that you need in the description down below. Go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and if you guys want to see more content like this where I preview upcoming games about politics, about geopolitics, about anything that is like power and revolution, the political process, lawgiver, superpower, if you guys want to see more content like that, give me your suggestions down below. And because I these these videos are extremely popular and I really do like to make them I like to give these games that spotlight that they need um, and this one definitely needs that sort of spotlight. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and talk about Lawgivers 2. So with a few questions that I asked the developer of this game, essentially I asked him um, uh, about like what who he is what he does, why he wanted to make the game, um, and here are his answers to those questions. We'll go ahead and knock these out first, and then we'll talk about the actual game itself. He said that his name is Damien, a game designer from uh, from South Tyrol, Tri 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 Tyrol, I believe I'm saying that right. He's from Italy. He's about to turn 32 years old and always had a great passion for politics, both local and international. And sometime his big dream was to create a political sandbox game, especially with a Parliament con Congress simulation that was not present on the market yet. The only time that we have seen that this type of uh, simulation in terms of parliament is the political process however that game is still in development essentially um, so that is the only other game in which we're gonna have this detailed of a uh, bill process so essentially we're gonna talk about it later where essentially the type of simulation we have whenever we introduce a bill you know it has to go through committee it has to go through essentially the exact same thing that you know if you've studied politics in in the last uh, couple of years you'll know how the what the process is of uh, of a bill going through congress and that is essentially what this game wanted to do at first however this game has been being funded extremely fast ever since its inception and we have 17 days left so if you guys want to support this game already go ahead and uh, click that link down in the description if you still need to be convinced i'll go ahead and convince you over the course of this video and then he said that he always liked the civilization series very much lawgivers 2 is in fact turn-based and has a world map, multiplayer, and multiple ways to win the game. Another game in particular inspired me since I was a child. It's called Economic War. I got it from the idea to include rockets launching. And then he said the development of the game is in its alpha stage, meaning it is playable, but there are still many updates to improve the game. I am currently adding more content, laws, parameters, and events and ways to fix them. And then the overall expected goal was 20,000 euros. Um, he made it by day seven. And he said he would be really excited to work on stretching the goals and more features. So he was, he wanted 20,000 euros at the uh, inception of this, of this Kickstarter. He's made $26,650 so far, which um, from what I know, that's a lot more than, uh, than 20,000 euros. He said a finished game for me is when all of the functions are working as expected and with a well thought balance. Nevertheless, he would like to support the game for many years to come. And then he said he would also like to ask polls for the next countries to add and more development priorities directly to the community during early access. I would like the game to be played for many um, at a time, and that's why modders can create new scenarios and laws, so to extend the life of the game. And whenever I asked whether he was inspired by games like Power and Revolution and the political process, he told me that he, sa he said not really. I would like to create a unique game experience from the different point of view. I think that's what makes Lawgivers different, is that it is the possibility to try out different political systems. Players can change the rules of the game while playing, and this brought me the, to the idea of a political sandbox game. And then if the base game gets well accepted, I would like to work on some expansions. Think about the pandemic, local elections, the European Union, etc. But it's very early to talk about that. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at 
the Kickstarter. Let's go ahead and talk about the features of the game and and about Damien. So, Lawgivers 2 is a political sandbox game that features multiple ways to run for elections, approve or reject bills, and govern your country. Start your political adventure from the very bottom and perhaps one day lead your nation to become the most influential in the world. And he said all images and footage of the game are not final and are represented of, of are and represent an unfinished product. So this is all bound to change. It's all bound to change. There are a lot of countries in the world that you can play as, or at least you can view, you can interact with. It's essentially a deep political simulator while also dealing with the geopolitics. A handcrafted realistic world map with over 150 countries, regional and stable subdivisions, and cities. The most influential nations of the globe will feature electoral districts too. And then some regions and states will have unique status, autonomy, and separatist movements. And then the map can be featured by GDP per capita, population density, military spending, and much more. A lot more available information will be dependent um, from the knowledge and relations with other countries and regions. And then the first three confirmed playable nations are the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany. So essentially, you can have deep political interaction, deep political simulation of the United States, of the uh, the House of Commons in the United Kingdom, and then the Bundestag in Germany. And then so the, uh, the community will decide the next countries to add when the time comes, with public opinion polls on our social media, which is the same for Log Ever's one. If you guys have not tried Loudgivers 1, go ahead and give that a go. That is already released on Steam, and I believe it's only a couple of bucks for you to try. And then we have the first map right here. This is the United Kingdom by population density. So you can see that the southernmost end of the United Kingdom is way more populous than the northern part in Scotland. Um, sometimes it is difficult to have a complete overview of what's going on in the world from a sphere. That's why we players will be able to interact and switch and view important statistics on a 2 d map too, which is an equirectangular projection. And that can also be used to fast navigate to a specific place. You know, it's really funny. All of this, you see the entire world right here, and then what's missing? What is missing, Mr. Green Greenland? Where's, where's my boy Greenland? Greenland, where are you at? Uh, I'm not funny. Each nation has its own currency, which will be affected by inflation, stability, and wars around the world. The player will be asked to manage their party, electoral campaign, and ensure the nation is doing great as well. And then in parties, we have in Loggerverse 2, players have the control of the leader of the party and are allowed to send ca uh, candidates to primaries, uh, elections, and interviews. All parties that have a few main ideologies and eventually come faction-related ideology. Primary challenge that the player faces is to avoid the potential of a party to split up, so it's important that all factions feel well represented in institutions or that each member gets simply paid enough. Relations and agreements between parties play a crucial role. It will also be possible, for example, to agree to a vote on a specific bill and get in exchange the support for another one. Uh, the, at some point, the feeling that we should get the transmit is similar to browsing a Wikipedia page. Here's a screenshot of the Republican and Democratic parties in the United States. So we see that we have leader, we have uh, the, the, the acronym, we have it is a major party, how many supporters they have, we have how many seats they have in the lower house, how many governors they have, how many mayors they have, and then we have ideologies and factions. And then we have the same thing for Democratic Party, supporters, uh, House seats, governor's seats, uh, mayor's seats, only 11. So we have 11 cities to start off with. And again, that's bound to change. Um, and then each person in the game has its own traits, personal history, favorite ideologies, advantages and disadvantages. Recognition over from 0 to 100% is a percentage by how this person is known by the citizens. Members can also be trained to raise their charisma and undergo surgical procedures to hire their looks. Um, so yeah, let's just go do some plastic surgery on your characters so you can get more supporters. Um, energy is very important and is consumed when writing new bills, visiting other countries, or filibustering and can be recovered by taking holidays. So you can take holidays, but what happens during those holidays? We can find out whenever the game comes out. 
Another important aspect to keep in mind are scandals that could afflict your party. Whether it's corruption or sex-related scandal, it'll heavily affect uh, voters' reaction. Try to avoid most troubles by investigating and sure, be sure to hire uh, just immaculate politicians. The game will support up to 10 parties or more if necessary. And then we have debates. Debates are one of the most essential elements of democracy and should always be encouraged. They can be organized in a region, state, to speak about an important matter that afflicts that part of the population. Every candidate has a limited time and points to distribute by talking about a specific topic. After a debate, the watchers will rate which candidates convince them more. So this is a debate about immigration. We'll actually uh, show the picture right here. So we have debates and then we have participants, we have minutes, we have watchers, and then we have the issue. And then we, so we can be positive, neutral, or negative about immigration. And then with statements, lawmakers can pr promise to raise or reduce a parameter in their country, like hospital beds, motorway length, or homeless population. The outreach of the statement depends on the budget, the popularity of the person, and the attention level of the citizens. Keep in mind that the most attention is given before an election, while other events like the Olympic Games might distract people too much. So we have a statement right here, and this is, the person is Carol Hall. The statement is promised to reduce the prison population. We have uh, the media outlet that it will be broadcast on, which is Wolf News. Um, and then we have the budget, 298,000. We have outreach, so 1.3 to 1.9 million people. And then we have um, after the statement is released, and then about what it actually did. So we have the the probable outreach and then the actual outreach. Like in the first game, when a candidate is promising an action, the voters will expect that once in power, the promise is fulfilled. If that is not the case, the person will re lose reputation and probably won't gather so many votes again. Um, and then we have the poll right here. How will you vote in the next election? General elections. The location is Arizona. The sample size is 5,000. And then we have a private poll right here. And then a margin of error is 4.1%. We have the cost. And then what are the priorities for your voters? And then a sample size 3,000, location is Texas, and then we have the citizens of pop by percentage, and then we have the parameters. 17% want freedom, 16% want environment, 15% want institutions, 13% want housing, 10.6% want education, 9.7% want safety, and 7.7% want entertainment. Polls are now much more detailed and can be used to understand the citizens' needs, so the players will know exactly which state and region they will have the conquest. And then we have the elections. Loggerverse is meant to be a sandbox game where players can experiment new policies and strategies for letting elections and avoiding, it and avoiding a national bankruptcy. All playable countries start with their own system and rules. During the game, the lawmakers might propose a parliament congress to switch to another electoral system, which, which can be a proportional system, majority in system, or a mixed one. And then eligibility requirements for candidates or a minimum electoral threshold can be set. The US, for example, will include primaries and midterm elections. The uh, electoral programs can be drafted to promise miraculous changes and to be probably forgotten shortly after the election. And then we do have an alpha test right here for the election. So if we watch, see all of these states fill in as we see them now. So that was very interesting and we also see that every state is filled with their counties and uh, so that is the most interesting thing about this game is that not only can you have a map of the United States you also have a map of every single county in the United States which is very exciting so can you go from the county level or how many cities are you going to be able to 
to mess with? Are you just gonna be the county seats or is it just are you just dealing with the counties themselves? Now gerrymandering is sure one of the most requested and exciting features that you can do. Players can draw their own constituencies to invite, include various districts and try to approve it and get probably an advantage in the upcoming election. So not only can you run in these elections, you can also draw your own electoral district maps. So like right here, we see that Florida is being gerrymandered. Could we do this and how effective could we do? So this is gonna be very interesting to see what kind of maps and constituencies people can gerrymander in in uh, lawgivers too. And then assign lawmakers to a list and send them uh, for proportional voting. Prefer preferences can be casted for each candidate. When France will be made available, also runoffs will be the two most voted candidates which will take place. We see right here that this is the German election simulation, basically sort of a forecast. So I think this is the green part right here is whenever all of them are voting, so all of their votes are being counted. So it's saying, okay, yeah, this is the turnout right here. Yeah, this is a turnout turnout map so we can actually see it says turnout right here so that's turnout right there and then this is what the makeup of the Bundestag will be and that is the final makeup of the Bundestag. So the SDP, did it actually predict that, that the SDP was going to win? Yes, it actually did. So he was essentially right whenever it came to predicting this election. Now by the seat number, we have 150, 105, um, and then you know various other seats for the Greens and uh, the AFP. But it looks like, is that the AFP? No, no, that's not the AFP. The AI to determine the election results is calculated mostly based on past real results and new trends that usually affect high density populations first and then more. And then we have parliament and Congress. Parliament and log Parliaments and lawgivers too are generated with an algorithm and can have up to 1,000 seats in multiple shapes. So the plenary can adapt uh, to the number of constituencies assigned on the election. Although it is recommended to play with no more than 150 seats to allow uh, to avoid unnecessary micromanagement. Oh, come on. You know you want. You know I'm going to be playing with at least the the amount of uh, seats that the United States has. Uh, and then every parliament elects a speaker of the house, a vice speaker, and committees. The, the speaker can delay important votes on calendar or call for a secret vote on a specific bill. So we're not only going to be able to mess around with, uh, with being speaker of the house, it's actually going to be a lot more detailed than uh, the political process. So this will actually be very big competition for the political process, and I'm really excited for this game. And then this is the uh, style of the UK Parliament. So this is the UK. And so we have the House of Commons. We have the Speaker right here. And then I'm pretty sure you can just click on anyone and it'll show you the names, their party, etc. Um, and then we have the uh, German Bundestag. So they actually modeled it pretty interestingly close to what they look like. So this is the United States Congress, 140 seats. This is the UK Parliament with 120 seats. And then this is the German Bundestag with 88 seats so that is very interesting i like how they did that um and then we have committees or groups of lawmakers that will examine the first law iteration and the number of committees the size is the sizes and competencies can be changed with constitutional amendments so you can also propose constitutional amendments in this game special committees can be set up to discuss impeach uh, to discuss impeach of the president or to investigate an ongoing scandal. So not only can you just do anything, just, you know, regular bill intro introductions, you can also do stuff like, you know, impeaching the president or investigating a scandal. Um, and then it can go through the committee as, you know, it does in real life. This is the voting system right here. So we see green is uh, four and then uh, red is declining of the bill. Then every lawmaker gets a salary from being an active member of the institutions, and that's why it's also something that can be regul regulated by laws. For example, that is the 27th Amendment of the United States. There may be situations where a high salary is unjustified. Laws. 
The legislative process is reaching a new level of realism in Lawgivers 2. First, the lawmaker has to propose a new bill to the competent committee. There, the bill can be modified by all parties involved if the majority votes in favor, if it goes forward to the plenary of the Parliament and Congress for the final vote. If the Parliament approves it too, then there is a signature, there just is the signature of the President or the monarch to be left. If the President decides to veto the bill, it has to go back to the plenary. So this is the system in which the bill is introduced introduced so the new bill is pre is presented and it goes over to committee if it's approved by the committee it goes over to the plenary um to an actual vote uh, in 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 the legislature and then if it is approved by the legislature and then it, it goes over to the president or the monarch and then once it happens there then it goes into force so then it can also say hey it goes to the committee if it's approved by committee it gets rejected by the parliament it goes back to committee if it dies in committee then it automatically dies there it just cannot go through any more processes um, but then, if it gets vetoed by the president or the monarch, it goes back to Congress for renegotiations, then it goes back, it can get vetoed again, and then it can just keep cycling like this. If that is represented in the game, that'll be really cool. But that is usually how it would work, unless the, uh, uh, you know, the president vetoes it, and then, uh, Congress or Parliament, uh, rejects it, and then it goes back to committee, and then it just dies in committee. So that's how you kill the bill. Just, like, a really long way of doing it. Um, and then we have all the process is regulated by the Constitution and can be changed in game to fit your needs and play style. So we have the, uh, the committees right here. We have the chamber, uh, constitutional law, articles nine, and then we have the committee, lower house, presidency, and we have the chamber, we have the building. And then this is the election system. We have the parliament size. We have the election frequency, eligible age, voter age, parliament shape, um, and then semi uh, committee seats, and then constituencies. So this is all of the stuff that you can change in the constitution, um, in the United States at least. And then a player may freely choose whether to propose a bill as ordinary or constitutional amendment. The constitutional bills usually require two thirds of a majority to be approved or removed. Um, so if you want to remove a constitutional amendment, again, you need two thirds. Um, and then we have, you know, the income bracket, we have the income taxes that we can mess with, how much we make off of those income taxes. Um, and then, so yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different income brackets that we can mess with. And then in addition to constitutional ordinary laws, there are now treaties which need to be ratified in all countries. One example is the NATO treaty, which gives a substantial defense bonus to all participants. We have the North Atlantic Treaty Organization's and Military Defense Alliance, uh, the strongest in the history in the history of the world. And we have an international treaty, where they have two articles. Um, and then so I believe every single country that is uh, interactive in the game um, that is a part of this treaty has to ratify it, but I believe it's already is ratified. So it's basically saying, for example, other countries, or if your night, if your nation, uh, adopts a treaty with another country, it has to go through and be ratified by your legislature. So that is really cool because I actually, that's literally how it works. Like if you can't just literally, the president can't just go over and say, hey, we have a treaty with you now. No, that treaty has to be ratified by the United States Senate, for example. Referendums and citizens initiatives can bring about new important topics to the attention of the general public, but a too much democracy might leave space to populism and not well thought out long-term choices. Uh, referendums can also be initiated top down from the president or, to, or uh, by a certain amount of lawmakers. And then we have the government. After elections comes a government formation and the players involved can distribute competencies and create the needed departments. Where there is no clear majority, then parties may enter a coalition to support each other more often happen with a which more often happens with proportional election systems. And then this is a part of the government formation council it looks like. 
and then a budget law to determine to de decide the spending forecast and resources distribution it needs to be approved every year so the treasury and secretary minister um, is in charge of emitting bonds the infrastructure minister can construct buildings the secretary of education can decide research priorities and so on every secretary minister will be judged according to its functions so i believe you can go in and build it or maybe they go in and build it themselves so that is a, a very interesting i really like that so at least even your cabinet will have the ability to kind of like be autonomous themselves and then i really like that a budget law so every time you have to decide on a budget it has to be approved by the legislature if the government is efficient then the implementation time of bills approved by congress will be much faster and then we have events many hurdles and consequences during the game can be can put your leadership at risk unexpected events can overturn your country and force you to change politics if the crisis isn't resolved in time it could spark further consequences and troubles and when you have an inflation crisis general progressive raise in prices for grids and services with consequential reduction of purchasing power of the citizens this is in the united states Dur duration is unknown and then we have a fragile state median monthly rent goes up by two and a median property price goes up by three and i need it has 80 percent of these citizens attention and we have the subprime mortgage crisis a sharp decline in u.s home prices after the collapse of a housing bubble we have an unknown forecast median property price goes down by five home ownership goes down by three and then homelessness goes up by two it has 70 percent of the uh, uh citizens attention and then we have organizations if the party candidate is struggling to uh convince new voters player players might seek the help and public endorsements of organizations to win elections by doing so they will be asked to hire some of their most trusted gentlemen and women or, or to be approved certain laws once in power uh doubtful organizations can provide the party with dirty money which can be used for immoral activities such as bribing or financing secret parties and candidates in foreign countries um, and then we see right here we have we have the wired news network we have national media we have uh, social media we have newspapers that we can go to and get them to support us basically just kind of like you know politicking our way around but then also uh, just being very dirty whenever it comes to getting back in the power and staying in power. And this is actually what, uh, so this is actually the coverage of the Wolf News uh, media outlets. So they say, we see that they have very strong uh, uh, coverage in Wyoming and West Virginia, in Oklahoma, in North Dakota, in Idaho. That's going to be very fun to kind of go around and see uh, what kind of outlets we have and what they can do. If the government struggles to collect enough taxpayer money, it might consider to buy some shares in a company, or if a big enterprise has a hard time to survive, but it's also a strategic asset, maybe it will be wise to buy it and keep it running. But beware that too much government could potentially reduce parameters like any innovation tax index, but lower income uh, and wealth inequalities. The game wants to highlight the positive side of all measures and be neutral and be as neutral as possible. So we see how we have companies right here. We can go over to B Motors or Pear Tech. And then we have employees, the GDP that they produce, the production, and then it, whether it is private or public. While farmers might be more propense to vote right, public workers will tend to vote left. And then we have economy. Every nation has something to offer the world, whether it's know-how, raw materials, or exotic fruits. In the whole role of the head of government, you will have to visit other countries and forge strategic alliances to secure vital resources for your citizens. And as you see right here, we have food, materials, products, uh, military, and technology. And all of these do, um, I'm pretty sure, will be going into your GDP. So we have food right here. We have apples, fish, meat, potatoes, tomatoes, oranges, cheese, wine, bread, uh, rice, and bananas. And then in wine, we have two productions for it. We have a 20% share, we have 24% demand, and then we have zero laws that are, that are related to it. And then we have the import and export that we are exporting 82.5% of it. And then trade happens automatically, but can be heavily influenced by treaties, shortages, and wars. There will be an increasing amount of tension between superpowers to arrange favorable agreements or sanction the specific resources uh, exchange among countries. So we see that we have a map of resources in Italy. So we see that uh, the Rome region right here um, produces cheese 
we see that uh, Sicily produces bread. No, wait, that, that's actually oranges. Um, we see that cars are produced in the northern part, meat, tomatoes, or apples actually, and wine are produced in the north. And then we have wars. Influence nearby regions with your main ideology or surprisingly uh, press the red button, but be prepared to face strong political consequences and sanctions. War, while possible, will highlight, be highly discouraged and repercussions might be catastrophic for your economy as well. So we see that a nuclear missile is heading off somewhere into Europe. Is it going toward France? I don't know. Um, this is a missile launch. Is that a missile or is that a nuclear missile? I don't know. Territorial disputes can happen over time. It will be up to your government to choose which side to pick. Every territory can be occupied by military personnel and tanks. To solve controversies, even referendums can be used to enact other regions. Uh, strong separatist movements might gain momentum and try to break up uh, to form a new nation, not necessarily with force. So we see the United States is a superpower. They have power of 3,305. They have 1.5 million active personnel, 500,000 reserves, and they have three missiles. Yes, the United States has three missiles all to themselves. Please note that the game will not include uh, extreme ideologies or violence against citizens. So if you guys are expecting, you know, power and revolution where you can bomb cities um, just out of the blue or even by accident like I have, um, you cannot do that in the game. That is not what this game is about. And then we have multiplayer. This is a huge one for a lot of you. Uh, to really bring the political simulation to the next level, there needs to be a way to play with it with or against other aspirant real politicians. That's why Lawgivers 2 has been designed from scratch to support host and client connection. This will allow a friend to join a coalition to form a government or simply stay in opposition and wait for the right chance to call or for a committee to impeach the president. So I'm actually going to have a lot of fun playing with y'all where we can, you know, form coalitions or we can just keep screwing each other over and just keep impeaching each other. That's going to be fun. Um, this is the screenshot of the server initializing. Logivers 2 will come as one of the few political simulation games with dedicated server support so you can set up a server at home or have long gaming sessions that can last for an indefinite amount of time. Many options can be set to regulate the multiplayer, like a fixed amount of turns per day, or simply a timer to force players to act. And then we have mods. The goal is to support Logivers 2 for many years to come, so all in-game content such as parties, laws, nations, regions, uh, resources, events, or even ideologies are editable with a simple text editor. Modders can reassign territory to form other countries and create a completely different scenario at a specific historical time. Uh, custom events or new parties can be added on a specific date to further enhance the game experience. Check out the scenarios uh, example right here, and I'll I'll link this in the uh, description. That way, if there's anything that I'm missing, uh, you guys can uh, uh, check it out yourself. Lawmakers' appearance can be customized too, whether adding new parties, which is face, hair, clothes, and accessories, or import complete portraits of famous politicians. They will be projected on a 3D by the engine. Um, so you can actually see right here, um, maybe that is Damien, I believe that is Damien right there. Um, Steamworks will also be supported, so adding mods will be simple as possible. Keep in mind that mods will mostly be the available on the PC. Some might work on Android too, but not on iOS because of their policy. I could provide some official submitted mods like new laws and events if they don't violate copyright and without harmful content. So this is an example of a 3D uh, AI generated portrait of a picture, just a realistic picture that you can throw in there. So everyone is just going to be politics gaming. Um, and then we have the Kickstarter edition. The Kickstarter edition is a special edition only backers of this crowdfunding campaign will obtain with the following features, which is additional game rules settings at the start for further personalize your game, and then exclusive a constitutional law, which has had national holidays. And then there will be more updates and questions answered during the campaign. Stay tuned. Don't hesitate to ask something in the comments section. So we do have the, uh, the, the goals of the game right here. Again, this was uh, introduced with the goal of 20,000 euros. We've already surpassed that by several thousand. Uh, so we have 15,000 euros, which is to secure lawmakers majority in both houses to pass some bills, which is op optional, and then committees can split their work between the ch two chambers. We do have the Senate, and we do have the upper house of the game, of the, uh, so we have the Bundestag and Bundestrat, we have the House of Commons, we have the uh, House of Lords, and then we have the House of Representatives and then the Senate in each of the three countries that are going to be available. And so what we are at right now is judiciary. So we are at 25,000 euros right now. 
Judiciary system and Supreme Court elect or nominate the judges that can favor you when a scandal occurs. So we can basically have the Supreme Court. If you have reached 29,000 euros, we can start a political adventure right after World War II and go through most major events, disasters, disputes, and territorial changes in recent history. So that is the timeline that we can reach. Uh, if we reach 35,000, we can do municipal elections, town halls, and ordinances. That's what I want to see. So if you guys can start funding this and we can get a lot of attention for this game, we can get 35,000 and we can have municipal elections. Uh, if we reach 37,000 euros, more than 1,000 AI generated faces or for a politician, which will be an optional, optional option. Um, and then if we reach 40,000, we can take a seat relax and then enjoy in watching the world progress and regress from the spectator mode um, and then if we reach 45,000 we can do an official commission soundtrack and main theme for vloggers 2 and then 50,000 we can do an official editor application with tutorials on how to comfortably edit the game content so again my goal for right here if you guys can actually do this we need to go to 35,000. I want municipal town halls, elections, and ordinances for like the cities of the United States. I really would like to do that because that's my favorite part of the political process is, you know, going in and having these cities that you can interact with. And then you can have all these laws at the federal level that can be interactive with. So I like that. Um, but I mean, if we can get up all the way to 50,000 euros, that's gonna be amazing. And that's about it for this Kickstarter. Um, essentially, my goal I would like for you guys to at least get us to the majors if we can get to 35,000 euros that would be amazing I really like the feature of municipal elections town halls and ordinances and with everything that I've seen in this Kickstarter so far I would love to see that in this game so we are already at 25,000 we need another 10,000 euros to get to that but if you guys can help him get all the way to 50,000, we can have an editor, we can have a soundtrack, we can have a spectator mode, we can have AI portraits, etc. And then with all of that out of the way, we do have community. You guys can go on and discuss this game with him, with the developer, with other people that are fans of this game. There's already a huge community of people that are interested in Lawgivers 2. Without the amazing community of that on Discord of 6,000 plus, um, this all this wouldn't have been possible. Tons of ideas, tips, and suggestions have been given, have been written and stored on its server. Many requested stuff has already made it into the game, like gerrymandering. If you want to discover Logovers 2 since the very first development update, which is September 2019, and join us forward on this uh, amazing journey, have a look here. I will post the Discord link in the description below. And then furthermore, you can find Logovers 2 on Reddit, Twitter, and Instagram. And then you can also follow their YouTube channel for more content. I will post every single link in the description down below. And then this, this distribution, it will be available on Steam, the Play Store, and on the App Store, but is not defined uh, yet when the game will be available to purchase. We want to be cautious and deliver something worth the play for the price tag, so we be sure to grab your exclusive Kickstarter edition today to get ready for early access. So, and then the future, in fact, the choice to move forward on Logovers 2 has been taken because the project design of the game felt very simplistic and outdated. And any additional update had to risk to break the game. Nevertheless, there have been more than 100 updates that you can see on the change log. If the Kickstarter succeeds, I would like to update and support Logarvis 2 for many years to come with massive new update and mechanics. I am here to stay and believe there is great potential. There are also cool concepts for substantial expansions to further expand the game. I would be really excited to work on, but that's not really a priority right now. And then there will be more to reveal in the future. And then a little bit more information about him. He is 31 years old, self-employed game designer from Italy. Since 2011, I have dreamed long nights to create a political simulation game. Um, we already kind of went through that. From time to time, I've been helped from paid professionals, friends, and relatives. I would like to thank them for their work. As life goes on, I would be really thrilling to expand and hire more people to form a real team and develop more similar games to Logger's series. And then that's about it. So if you guys can go and support this Kickstarter, that would be amazing. We have 17 days to go as of April 12th, 2022. We have 722 backers. We've made $26,670. Let's get up to 35,000 euros or about um, about so if you guys could go ahead and support this Kickstarter right here, we've made $26,671 out of a pledge 
of $10,875. We have 727 backers. We have 17 days to go as of April 12th, 2022. If we can get up to $37,908 or 35,000 euros, that would be amazing because we can get those municipal elections up. If you want any more information about this game, go ahead and check the description down below. I will have every single piece of information you need about this game in the description. Go support this on Kickstarter if you can, and uh, whenever it does come out, I will be playing it on this channel. So leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, go support Logivers too. Thank you guys so much for watching this. See you next time.